Uh, let me introduce you, Chris Wingood, um, the QA manager, automation manager from company Prodigy. And today he's going to introduce us to a robot framework. Anybody heard about robot framework? Okay, we have a few people who know that. Awesome, awesome, great. Thank you very much. Let's give him an applause. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, so, just one more time, who's ever used Robot Framework or has heard of it before? Okay, a few people. Uh, so, who's never automated before, I guess, is the most interesting question I can ask the group. Only a couple of you guys, huh? Well, this is going to be something totally different than if you've never seen Robot and you're used to automation, um, it's keyword driven. So, we're not going to be using syntax, we're not going to be using functions, methods, uh, Java, I don't know, name it. We're not using any of the languages that are going to take you a lot of years in school to learn or a lot of time in training to learn. Um, everything that I'm going to show you today, you can download and do tonight, uh, but you've been drinking or so, so wait until tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, to go over it real quick, I'm going to give you a quick overview of what Robot Framework is, how to install the software, uh, configuring your first project, getting familiar with keywords, writing your first script, and then the next steps that you should start working on to learn more about the software. And again, this is just an overview, so next couple slides. What is Robot Framework? Why would you use it? And how to get started? Uh, as you heard earlier, everybody wants to depend on open source software. It's because everybody in the community contributes to it. Uh, so Robot Framework, Robot Framework is exactly that. It's an open source uh, project. It's built on Python, and it's um, used by a lot of different people. Uh, why use it? So I use it because uh, I didn't have a programming background. I wanted to be able to automate the company I worked for didn't have the budget to hire QA engineers. Um, so they were like, uh, we have some, they could maybe do it, talk to us in a couple of years, and maybe we'll be able to do mobile automation, which was the team that I specialized in. So. Uh, this was very early on in the years of Appium, and I was like, well, I'm going to try and figure stuff out myself. So uh, I taught myself how to do this. It took me a little while, but um, you can go through. There's tons of resources on it, and as long as you've uh, written test cases, you're going to be able to do this. Uh, also, it's free. You don't need any expensive tools. They do provide an IDE. Um, I don't use it because it's not as compatible as I'd like with the, all the different platforms that the actual language is. Uh, the Python language and robot itself. Um, so I use PyCharm, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. And then the last item is cross-functional coding. So between all the different libraries and everything, uh, it, you can write API tests in it, you can write your mobile tests in it, web tests, application tests, database tests, everything on one framework. Uh, real quick again, uh, I can't teach you everything in 30 minutes, so here's a couple things that I'm not going to go over today. Uh, you're going to need some basic computer knowledge. Again, you're going to need to have written a test case before. Um, most of the keywords are assisted by the IDE. PyCharm will look into the library and tell you guys exactly kind of what you're supposed to do. There's also lots of online resources for it, so if you take your best effort at guessing a keyword, you're probably going to get it. Um, and everything else that I'm not covering, variables, object identification, integrations with other systems, reporting, custom keywords, and it goes on and on and on because you could really go really deep into it just like you can any other standard language. Uh, so here's the requirements to install stuff. Uh, as I said, Robot is based on Python. Uh, there is a Java implementation if you wanted to go that way. I use Python because it's uh, easier for me, but if you're familiar with Java, you can go that way too. Uh, it runs on both Windows and Mac. Uh, we're going to use Chrome today and Selenium driver, and uh, PyCharm can run it all. So uh, the reason why you would want to make a decision on one platform over the other is if you were doing something like mobile testing, you would need an Apple computer to run iOS tests, or an environment that you could be added to uh, to run the tests. Um, quick configuration steps, I'm going to skip through these. Uh, pretty quickly here, but uh, you're going to open up PyCharm for your first time, create a project, name it, whatever you'd like. Um, in the example I use, test. You're going to configure it going into the preferences, project interpreter, and set up your Python environment, which will add uh, 
Robot Framework and Robot Framework Dash Selenium Library, which will give you basically all the tools you're going to need to start automating today uh, with web automation. So to look at keywords, uh, like I said, they're going to be pretty much what you would expect them to be. If you wanted to click on something, the keyword for that is actually going to be click. You want to scroll something, it's going to be scroll. You want to zoom in on something, it's going to be zoom. Um, the only thing that you're really going to have to learn outside of that is object identification. So you need to learn how to figure out next path or CSS or uh, identification via accessibility identifiers, however you want to do it. Uh, all of them are great. It's not really up for, I want to debate any particular one being good uh, versus another. I think they all work fine. And we'll go right into our first script. So our user story is, as a user, I want to Google the answer to what is the meaning of life. So as a QA engineer or a QA analyst, I might write the test case to open up the Google and type in the question, what is the meaning of life, and expect the response to be 42. So I might break that out into steps. Open the Chrome browser to google.com, select the search field, type into the text field, what is the meaning of life, click the submit button and record the answer. Anybody want to raise their hand and guess what the keywords are going to be for that? If you can guess the keywords for the first one here. Open. Open browser. Yeah, oh, open browser is exactly it. Uh, what about the second one? Click. Click. Yep. Um, and then the next one for typing in the text. Okay. Yeah, so, so we're all pretty much on the, the right track. This one will be in the text, so we're going to go right into the next slide. This is some code that was written, so you guys can see it's open browser. We type in the URL for the argument and the browser we want to use. In this case, it would be Chrome. Uh, clicking on the search field, so that way we can get the cursor active on it. In Google, most of the time, the cursor is automatically active, so this is an optional step. Um, then we have search, so we're putting text into the search field, what is the meaning of life? And then uh, the last one here, this is an next path for Google search button. They don't really want you automating their page, so they make it a little bit more difficult. Uh, that's why it's a really crazy long next path that's not particularly useful, but uh, it works for this particular test. And then uh, for recording the answer, just to keep away from the really complicated scenario of actually finding and parsing the answer, we're just gonna take a screenshot. Um, and then next, we're going to run the script. So to run the script, you'll go into PyCharm's terminal, type in robot test, oops, uh, the directory, which is test, and then test.robot for the file name uh, that we set up in the project earlier. And we'll go right into a demo real quick. So just like what I showed you guys earlier, we have a uh, the script that was there, it's just uh, written, typed out already. Um, I can use the up arrow to type in what I last typed so that way you guys don't have to watch me type this out, but robot, test.robot, so that's the file name that I've named this test right here. And hopefully it'll open the Chrome on the window up there. Okay, good. Okay, so I didn't add any um, close browser keywords, so the window stays open like that, but you can see that we didn't really meet our expected response because the open window didn't show the full window, but um, we can at least refer to the screenshot that's now been logged inside our log from Robot Framework. And again, this is all kind of just built in. Uh, to the system, so you don't have to spend any time setting any of this up. It's all automatic. So the, re the log will tell you exactly the steps, each step that passed, and take a screenshot for you at the end. Uh, so that way you can actually refer back to it. And we can uh, do image comparisons, there's libraries for that. Um, like I said, you could actually parse the whole XML of the page and try and find the exact image you were looking for based on all the different types of selectors inside. Uh, 
Uh, and then, like I said, there's just a, a lot of things left. The Appium, Appium is a big one uh, for mobile test testing. Uh, I use it every day. Um, and get, getting familiar with keywords. So all these links here go to actual documentation for the frameworks so that you guys can uh, research into it. I'm gonna drop this presentation into the Slack channel so that way you can kind of take a look at it. Um, and kind of play around with it yourself because it's pretty interesting in my opinion. And that's it. If you guys have questions, go ahead and raise your hands, I guess. Really? That's it. It's, it's too straightforward. <laughs> okay. Okay. Last call. No, of course Please. Uh, so you demonstrated using the Chrome browser. Can you, you test with other browsers? Uh, so in my role specifically, we work directly with mobile devices and Appium, so we test different mobile browsers for sure. Um, I, I just use Chrome because it's the easiest one to work with in terms of object identification, so it has all the developer tools built into it. You can right-click on anything, ask it to inspect and copy the XPath directly, uh, which if you're just kind of just learning, it's fine. You're not going to use that, obviously, going um, further into your career, but um, Definitely being able to do those inspections is really part of every type of automation uh, that you do, regardless of language. Uh, my, my question was actually, uh, let, me, let me clarify my question. Is, does the robot framework let you uh, integrate with other tools, like say the Selenium Gray or the browser stack? So you can test with different browsers, like say if I want to test with Safari or I want to test with, you know, you know the cross of browser testing for this one. Yeah, it, you, can, you can launch any browser that you want through it. It'll launch IE or Firefox. You can hook it up with Selenium Grid, and uh, we, we use actually that to cycle through mobile applications through the different operating systems, too. Uh, does Robot Framework support um, desktop applications? Yes. Uh, they have a library for just about everything, and that's kind of why I like the Python side of it better. I've always thought of Python as kind of like borrow your own code. Uh, somebody's written something for everything already. You just have to take a couple minutes and look through. Um, to show you guys kind of real quick back to the, the demo, I can show you an example of just some of the libraries that are available there. Put it back. Sure. <laughs> How do we get it on that screen? Uh, that one goes P. Yeah. Says. Mm. Windows shift left. <laughs> yep. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Uh, so these are the ones that I showed you guys how to set up real quick. Um, in the presentation, but if you go, now it's hard because it's not on my screen too. Uh, right up here is an add button. And th this is managing your Python environment, so you can add just about anything, but I'll show you just in general, there are so many different libraries available already. Uh, so you, you want to work with Oracle? I, have, I haven't used most of these because there's so many, but Oracle are part. There's Appium there. Yeah, Appium's there. There's, like I said, database, uh, REST APIs, uh, integrations with Test Rail, one of the big ones that I use. Um, I also use it for uh, notifications, push notifications through, um, shoot, no, I can't even remember the name of the push notification service we use. Oh, yeah, Urban Airship. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, the reason I like to use this really is I've taught a lot of people to, to use it as well. Um, and it, you don't need anything to really get started. It doesn't, it doesn't really get much harder than what you see here. There are definitely levels of uh, implementation where you can grow into it. So if you wanted to do something like working with Urban Airship, you would have to maybe take their API and build keywords around it in Java or Python. But a lot of times, like I said, those already exist. So you just get to use them for free. 
Anybody else? All right, so let's give applause. Thank you very much, Chris.